Like Diet Coke is good. Coke, my favorite is Coke Zero. Ooh, I, I do not like Coke Zero. I don't know why. I do apologize, but I am a Diet Coke, Diet Coke cat. So, yeah, that's hey, you're allowed to be. Yeah, you are allowed uh, to be. Thank you everybody for listening and tuning in. Facebook high, Spreaker high. Uh, let just wait a sec for for more people to jump on. Um, and we are in Ephesians chapter three. So grab your Bibles, come on in, love your life or change it. Let's go, baby. Come on now. You know, that's, that's right. Rocking one of our old shirts that uh, we it. came out with, I think, in 2014, maybe 2015. But uh, it's just the definition of weightlifting. I like it. Right on the front there. That's good. I like it. By the way, I have, I have, cool. a, I have a weightlifting talk shirt. Old school. Yeah. With the little circle. Yeah. Nice. Logo. Should wear that. Yeah, Jess, this material is really good, too. Some yeah. shirts, you know, you get lucky with the material. Uh, right, right. I like the material on the Love Your Life or Change It with the barbell on it. Really good. Yeah, it's really good. I wear it all the time. Well, thanks for the shout-out, Brian. That's awesome. Steph, on the chat board. Hey. Good morning. Coke Zero is life. Oh, she's on, she's on your side, Brian. What's up? That's a Team Coke Zero. Jen. Jen. Um, is she Diet Coke? She was... Team Dr. Pepper Zero. Oh. And then I was Coke Zero. I kind of yeah. got her over into Coke Zero. Okay. All right. Okay. So, That's like Carlos. He's all Dr. Pepper. I like, uh, uh, I don't like Diet Dr. Pepper the way it tastes. And I it, Diet mm. Coke to me has this weird aluminum taste to it now. Mm. But I don't know. It's all good. You know who drinks about 30 Diet Cokes a day? Uh, Donald J. Trump. He does. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He drinks a lot. He's a cigarette smoker. It, well, I've I never seen him smoke. Yeah, I know. Definitely one of those closet smokers, which kind of blew my mind. Donald J. Chapter Trump. three. There it is, right there. My bobblehead fell. I had a Hawaiian Donald Trump bobblehead when I got when I was there. I need to order another one. He fell, and the only thing left was his head. So, oh. so he's, right. he's with Stick me still. Computer. He's still alive. He's still well. But Ephesians chapter 3, come on in. ESV is what we read out of. We actually started most of the study NLT, switched over to ESV. Well, no big reason, but um, so grab your Bibles, come on in. Either open them up right here. Uh, yes, sir. Right here, real one in the hands, or go to Google, just pop it up and uh, continue with us. So what, April 11th, 2001, we started in Genesis 1-1, and now here we are, Ephesians 3. Wow. Wow. So changed our life forever and it can change yours too. Just get along, get along with us and go for it. Yes. Exciting. And then once we finish revelations, 22, 21, uh, we were, we're going to start over for lap two. Do it, it again. Looks, are going to get away from Spreaker because they are shutting down the live feed on Spreaker. And we're going to go, uh, put, run everything through Facebook and through YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. So it'll all save on YouTube. We're going to create our own channel yeah. and all that. Uh, Sherry, good morning. Happy Thursday. Yeah, hey Sherry. So really exciting. Yeah, it's weird that they're doing that, Spreaker, right? I mean, you have so many people. I guess they're are they shutting the whole thing down? No, they're just gonna do, you know, the recorded versions. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Live is fun though. Live is interacting. It, well, no, no, no. It it's the only way to go. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I I refuse to record and then post. Because uh. I just feel like I can connect with your peeps with people and not even in me too. And you knowing that it's live. Yeah. There's no editing. There's no second takes. So I just prefer that. Um, yes, I was actually going to pray about that. Sherry, thank you for, uh, for bringing that up on the chat board. Uh, I don't know if you saw that yet, Brian. Yeah, I did. You did. So very sad news. Um, for those that are listening, that don't know, and I will let Sherry on the chat board or Brian speak more on this. The, what I've heard, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not trying to put false info out there, is that in the CrossFit Games, a gentleman just died swimming. Yeah. And that's, that's, all, that's all I know. What, what, what more information do we have, Brian? That's it. He, lo he, he lost his way, and... And uh, from all, in, only thing I know is he lost his way. I looked it up, and he, uh, they, he, they couldn't find him. So he must have 
sucked in some water and went straight under. You know, it can only take a second or two. And, you, you know, you're out of breath already because you're swimming hard. You know. I have his name here on the group, the men's group text. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, we, two, we have two good team members there right now coaching. They were at that swim event. We do. Yeah, they said they were there at the event. And so, yeah, wow. we did, Serbian. They're t it's a Serbian uh, CrossFitter. And so we just pray for him. Let me read this, Brian. It's uh, Forgive me for possibly butchering it, but Lazar Dukajk, L-A-Z-A-R. Yeah. And then the last name is D-U-K-I-C is the name of the athlete who passed away. You know, in um, Iron Man, I think either every year or every other year, somebody dies in the swimming event. Mm, it's tough. Yeah. So I don't know the stats on that exactly. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking, man. Especially, you know, uh, f just f super athletic. I mean, these guys are elite. You know, are they the mm. fittest in the world? They're they're all they're top hundred, two, three hundred. They're fit and they're 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 strong. And this guy snatches three hundred pounds plus. You know, that's kind of an athlete he is. And so, just Gabe's sad up. to see it. Hey, Gabe. Hey, dude. Hey, we are live on the Bible Study Podcast right now. You're actually on air. Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah, yeah. We're also if you go to Brian Nietzsche's Facebook page, we're live on there. You can see us. Nice. Yeah, jump on there, listen in. We're about to read Ephesians three. We'll do. And then uh, I'll call you after the study. Sounds good. All right, we'll see you, Gabe. Bye. Yeah. Mm. Well, we pray for his friends and family. Yeah. And uh, just it, it just goes to show you, Brian. You never know. That's why every day you, you must you know, uh, value and appreciate and love others and, you know, um, walk with the Lord and dance for the Lord with all your might and be biblical and, um, amen. Take any day for granted. Yeah. It's, you can't, you can't take any moment, any day, you know, love your loved ones, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if what's that song by Garth Brooks, if tomorrow never comes like you gotta, you gotta just love people all the time. That's why anger and hatred you can't live in that bitterness and, and, and frustration. Okay. You got to get it out. There's no time, Brian. You're so right. Get it out. Like you just said, you know, I mean, I can speak to that. You know, I was at the Portland Zoo looking at the elephants. Mm. You never think you're going to drop dead at the zoo with your family. You don't think you're going to drop dead or not drop dead, but you don't think you're going to die swimming in a CrossFit event. Right. No. Guess what? In a moment, man. So what do you do as a believer when your family dies like that? You know, we don't know. The in, there, there is an enemy out there to kill, steal, and destroy, right? So the only thing to do is turn to the Lord. I love you, Lord. I'm sad. I don't understand everything. But mm. praise the Lord, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go try to figure out what did I do to cause this or what did they do. And there's no, there's no point. That's, that's, that's frivolous, right? We mm. just repent in our lives and turn to him. That's all we can do, you know? Yeah. And that's it. And so that's what we do, right? We, we just serve the Lord. We love the Lord. And um, look, here's another thing. If you don't, if you really are struggling like with guilt or bitterness or mm. in, you know, and you lost someone or you don't know what, how to figure that out, mm. take some time by yourself and throw yourself at the throne of God. Oh, wow. I need mercy. I need grace. I can't I, understand this. I don't know how to go forward. Lay on the dirt. Boom. At his feet, on his toes, forehead to his toes. Bury your face in the dirt and bow and pray yeah. to the Almighty. Yeah. Yeah, cry out. That's the only... Look, it, it finally took 400 years of slavery. The Jews finally cried out in Egypt. Mm. Help, Lord! You know, and David did it time and time again. Oh, That's right. what God's looking for. He wants us to surrender to Start him. Crying. That brings us back, you know, and... Yeah. When we read the Bible, we don't just read about it. We are there. Yeah. We are there. We feel it. We see it. We can touch it. We smell it. We breathe it. Right. My my mission in life is to have people read the Bible. Yeah. If we are, to be honest, how it's meant to be read is to experience experience it on an intimate level. Not just bounce around reading one liners. Yeah. Right. Do it justice like it does when you walk through the journey with Christ. From the trail trailhead to the end. Amen. That when you grab his hand, two of y'all, three of y'all, five of y'all, and just get on the journey, right? 
becomes it's yeah it's a time machine you're walking the bible you are living yeah. bible you're not just reading it you're living it so when you say when you bring up old stories brian Hitch, i get emotional because it's like oh we were there we were there in the cave right with, with king david or not king david when david when he's yeah. crying for the lord we were crying out too right yeah lord are they th those are they who increase my troubles many are they that surround me right but what does he say you are my savior you are my guide my enemies are surrounding me but that's okay mm. you will surrender so that's what we have to do right we run to him that's exactly right john and so you know that's what paul did he got beat up he got tortured they mm. killed him you know, I, I fully believe in Acts. They killed him and they had to, he, God raised him from the dead when they drug him back out of the city. If he did or not, he was at the point of death. He he wrecked into the the um, the rocks. You know, he was stuck on a, a, an island for who knows how long, months and months, almost two years, I think. Anyway, just yeah, perilous. He said perilous. Well, believe, walk with Jesus. And what did he do? Ran to him. He ran to him. Amen, John. Run to him. That's just the... Uh... The bottom line so and uh but yeah our hearts go out to his family glory to god that's right mm. so yes nicholas uh, tobert on the chat stephanie uh sherry of course uh, on the chat board uh facebook out there hello i don't know who's watching but hello um and let's let's get it started it's a beautiful thursday let's dance for the lord with all our might like david did when he became king and let's praise jesus walk with jesus read his word study and then um after this study Let's do. Let's not. Let's 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 walk by action and then and shout on top of a hill. Amen. That's what we're gonna do. Amen. You want me to? Well, you want me to pray it in, or do you want let's, to pray it in? Let's do it, Brian Nice. Let's go, dear Heavenly Father. You are just. You are everything. You are our Father, our Provider, our Lord, our Guide, our Teacher. You sent the Holy Ghost to teach us, to lead us, to show us things to come, and of course, the Rock, the Word. You know, mm -hmm. the Man. Jesus, the anointed, Jesus Christ, thank you for laying down your life and bringing us into covenant with God Almighty. Whew, amazing. We love you, Lord. We just shout your name from the hills as loud as we can. Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 That was a beautiful prayer. The great I am. Well, let's get into it and read uh, God's breathed word. Let's do it. Chapter three. We did one and two yesterday, and now we are on three. Let me just turn the page here because I was on two here on mm. my computer. Turn the page. Know, but it's easier, as you know, on the podcast. Um, well, you prayed it in. You want me to kick it off? Please. Yes. First one. Get to go first. All right, here we go. Uh, the mystery of the gospel revealed. Ooh. All prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles. I love that. Prisoner of Christ. Amen. That's the biggest blessing in the world. Sure is. Prisoner of Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's it's a, it's a prison you never want to escape. Mhm. Mm there ain't no ex escape in prison here cuz you don't want to. You know, cuz once he enters you from being saved, Romans 10:9:10. You know, um, and the ghost dwelling within you uh, from from the baptism and and all of that. It, it's it's like once the Christ is in you, you're one. It just got done saying that last chapter, Brian. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. One so, with him. You know, that's a that's the greatest prison in the world. I mean, isn't it though to yeah. be one with God? Well, I don't want out of that. I don't want out of that. It, it, listen, Nietzsche, there's two prisons in the world. There's the prison with Christ and the prison with the world. You choose. <laughs> you want to be prison with the world and therefore mm. be prisoners of the devil for eternal hell? Or do you want to be a prisoner of Christ, the Almighty, yeah. with true freedom? Amen. See, there's only one prisoner that has freedom, and that's with Christ. Amen. The world prisoner, you're, the ball and chain is sin. Well I, well, I don't understand prisoner. Why does he have to use that term? Because, <laughs> man, I'm, 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 in, I'm in the pit. If I'm in the pit, he's there with me. If I'm on the mountaintop, he's there with me. If I have everything, he's there with me. If I have nothing, 
he's there with me. If I'm dirty, he's there with me. Bring it, Brian Knight. Bring it. That's it. That's what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. We're locked together, John. We, it's like we're shackled together. I love that. We're locked together. Yeah. And nowhere. Oh, I, never, I didn't even think about that right there. We're chained together for life. We're brothers in Christ. We're the family of Christ for eternal life. Yeah, yeah. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen. Can't. Yeah. The the best weapon of all. All mm-hmm. right. There we go. Verse two. Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, Mm. how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations. Yes, baby. Oh, right when I finish this, I'll make you guys lunch. But you can go down and get some snacks in the cupboard, baby. Try to be quiet. Levi's sleeping, okay? Thanks, baby. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Verse 5, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Mm. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow hires. Yeah, heirs. Heirs, members of the same body and and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. See right there, Brian Neitch. I love this because don't forget, and I know the Jews knew more in the Old Testament because they had the Bible. Other people had the Bible too. Tower of Babel, that's a whole different podcast. Yeah. But to get into Abraham's bosom, to paradise, yeah. you had to believe in Yahweh, the cloud, the burning bush, the great I am. Yeah. Yes, Jesus, the Trinity, the Godhead, right? And then once in paradise and Christ walks in, all knees bow right. and accept the great I am, the Savior, the blood of the Lamb, and therefore is put into heaven Amen. from there. And so I love this, but now that Christ is risen— Paul is saying, hey, I'm, we're spreading the word of Jesus. It's no longer a mystery of Christ when the knee bows in, in paradise. Right? Now it's time to preach on top of a mountain. Yes. Now it's time to spread the word because the, throughout the entire life, the thief on the cross didn't know about Jesus. He knew about Yahweh, I bet. And then at the very last second, he goes, oh, my gosh, this is the Savior. He's the one. The mystery turned in to acceptance that got him into paradise. Amen. He believed faith. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. You're the one. You're the one. And guess what? God didn't reject him. He said, okay, come on in. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. He's not out there rejecting people left and right because he wants he wants people he wants to accept them but he ha- he can't receive them unless they believe unless they have faith in him mm-hmm. you don't want anyone to come in your house if they hate you and they're rejecting you you're not going to marry someone who hates you and rejects you it's the same concept right mm-hmm. no you want someone you who want- believes you want to take it amen sorry i thought you were didn't mean to interrupt there. No, don't. Amen. You're good. So well said. Um, you want to hit seven? Sure. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given by me, given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints. Hmm. Yeah. See how. We I love Paul. Yeah, I love it. I mean, Paul, we know you're great. <laughs> yeah, he's so humble. Exactly. But he's yeah. not the least. No. Then again, though, I'm not going against the Bible, but I think this is human. Even though God, this is, I love this conversation because even though God breathed this, you know, Paul is still saying this. And we know that I, I feel, Brian, that God's saying, it's so, ah, so fascinating that God breathed this. But even though God's saying at the same time, no, you're not, Paul. Stop being so hard on yourself. Because it's just such a great example of Paul putting himself down and raising Jesus up. Yeah. 
down yeah. Paul, Jesus up. John North, down. Yeah. Jesus up. Love through Christ. Happiness through Christ. Walk with Christ. All glory to Christ. John North, down. Yeah. And Paul does such a good with that, even though he's 20-time Olympic champion. He's the GOAT. I would say he's the GOAT of the Bible. Well, I mean, maybe John the B. John, Jesus says John the B. But the GOAT of the Bible puts himself down. Wow. What an example for us in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, no, John the Baptist said that. I need to decrease so Jesus can increase. You know? Oh, that was him? That was John the B? Yeah. He it said was. That. All right, nice. Yeah. And so remember, John was the greatest of all before Jesus, right? Mm. And um, of course, until the new covenant came, now now the Holy Ghost is, is around. But yeah, amazing. So Paul, right? To, verse 8. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints... This grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ or of the anointing, you know, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, that's us, right? The manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Er, what does that mean? Let's reread that. Verse 10. So that through the church, wow, through us, John, the, mm -hmm. the manifold wisdom, the entire wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the mm -hmm. heavenly places. What do you think about that? Well, I think that, don't forget, we are part of the New Testament, and yeah. of course, part of the Old, but we're living in the Church of Acts still. Nothing's changed. And I feel like he's talking about the upcoming uh, scriptures that are soon to be written, yeah. and more prophecy, more revelation, but also us as well, like you said, Brian, of the Church. And not only, it's not new ink, it's not new, what do you call it, revelation, but it's 2 Timothy 3.16, where it matches the Bible to, to yell on top of a mountain to save all of humanity as much as we can, of course, because God wants to see everyone saved. Yeah, amen. And I just feel that um, even though we might not know everything because there's still mystery, he can work through people to simplify it. Yeah. And to connect with people, even a room two kid like me, where I can understand the salvation of eternal life. Yeah. I like that. I don't know if I'm off. No, that's that. great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, exactly. What's your? No, that's it, man. We he works through us, like the wisdom of God works through us as the church, mm. you know. But I mean, and that doesn't mean we're we're better. That means we're. I mean, we have the Spirit of God in us working through us. That's the whole point. Mm. You you hit it on the nail, right? It's it's not that we have a new Bible, a new chapter. Right, but it's the same word of God in our lives mm. that we show to the world. Mm. We lay hands on the sick, they recover. We believe in faith for overcoming things, for victory, for miracles, for happiness, for joy, for life change. That's the that's the wisdom of God. Yes. Right? And then look, it says that we make that known to the rulers and authorities in heaven, like in the spiritual realm. Like there is darkness that says, Don't you can't do that, don't do that. And we, and we do it like, like when Jesus came. So anyway, it, it's yeah. amazing. It's just amazing. This, this, this chapter is just. Hey, Will Hawkinson, he is risen. Will Hawkinson's on the chat board. Amen. We, we got a packed chat board right now on Spreaker. I don't know any, any comments come on through Facebook, Brian. Gabe, Gabe says, Hey, I'm here. Hey, Facebook, Gabe, that's Pastor a, Gabe. That's about, and yeah. And uh, glory to God. So uh, verse 11 says this, this was yeah. verse 11. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. He, mm -hmm. he says, stand strong, right? Verse 14, for this reason, I bow my knee, but bow my knees before the father. That's fascinating. Look at that. You know, I think we have in our head, Brian, the one knee bow. Mm. Bowing to kings and queens and people. Yeah. Humans, never bow to anybody. I mean, I do like the bend the knee, right? I always think of like when I bow to Christ, I'll bow with one knee. 
But I love the Bible because, of course, it just tells you everything you need to know. It's the only truth in the world, by the way. Everything else is messed with. Ooh. Everything else is flawed, corrupt. Yeah. To a certain level, right? Not everything, like, you know. Just Not everything's just like evil it's, and bad. It's all not 100% truth, of course, right? The only truth in the world is the 66 books of the Bible. Mm. Outside of that, nothing is truth. You know, isn't it funny, like on Windex and all of the uh, cleaning supplies, it all says effect kills 99.9% .9 of germs. Yeah, there's always a clause. It says that because obviously legal reasons probably why you can't say 100%, right? So legally, they probably get away with saying 99.9%. .9 right. Well, it's life. We are Windex. The Bible is 100% Amen. the cleaner of bacteria. That's right. That cleaning aisle at Safeway. Boy, it will clean you up, John, 100%. You just got to let it. Yes, and I know this is obviously not doctrine. It's like, why is John on this small point here? Let's continue. But now I'm going to change my thought, and I'm going to bow on both knees yeah. in front of God or when I pray or when I, when I, and, and when I go to heaven because – that's what it says right here. Look at 14. For this reason, I now bow my knees, plural, before the Father. Yeah, amen. I just think these little nuggets are fun. I do, they are fun. The Holy Ghost just throws them in there, too, just for us and for, for all time. I say just for us because he did it just for us for this moment. Oh, wow. And for others, too. And for Paul. He did it through Paul. He did it, he did it for all, this, all, all the believers before us. Hey man, look at look at uh, Nick Tober on the on the chat board. Uh, the energy see. is high today, as the highest Almighty. Mm. Let's go, Nick. Nicholas so, Tober coming in hot. Coming in hot, baby. Yeah. So he says. So I love this. Bow my knees. By the way, that's like total surrender. Fascinating. You know, he's totally surrendering. For this yeah. reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Wow. Mm -hmm. That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through mm -hmm. his spirit in your inner being. Right. The King James says your inner man mm -hmm. so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. I love that. That may be may have strength. Or oh, the King James says it too, so well, may be able to. So you may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that mm -hmm. you may be filled with all the fullness of God. He wants you full, John, of everything. Well, I was just thinking that, Brian, because look at the first sentence here. Prisoner of Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, that's being in, that's being in the prison of love. That's it. That sounds cheesy and corny. Like, what, what is John writing an R&B song? It's true. God is love. God is only good. And you want to fulfill all 686, you know, something laws in the Old Testament? You want to fulfill those? Guess what? Love. Your love your neighbor. Love oh, Christ. Not yourself. No, where does it say love yourself? Love your neighbor. Love others. Yeah. Love. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to tolerate sin and practicing sin in life, okay? Well, I'm not going to steal that and say, love is love and just let it... No, I'm not going to tolerate that, but right. I will love you right. and I will love everybody. So in the beginning when it says prisoner, I am in the prison of love. Yeah, amen. I'm not in the prison of jealousy and practicing sin. I'm not in the prison, I'm the prison of the world of anger and material things. I am in the prison... Of love. Jesus is love, Brian Knight. That's, that's it. He is love. Oh, man. How good is that? That is so 100% true. I don't get topical services. Just read, read the Bible. and they're... They, they, they read. Some of them read it. Look, look. Look, look what it says. Just to, just to say what the, just to capitalize on that. 17 is this. So that Christ, or you could just say love, right? So that love, Christ, dwells in your hearts through faith, that you are rooted and grounded in 
love. Like, I believe totally. It's not just love like, oh, I love you. Come here. I want to use you. It's mm-hmm. love like I will do anything for it. It's a covenant love. It's You are mine. I'm I'll yours. Die. I'll die for you. Look, I'll sell everything I have for you. And I'm not mm-hmm. talking about just God. Of course, we're re- rooted in God's love. But Man, to you, yeah, to the wow. church, to the, to, the, to the lost. I wouldn't die for you. Because I have my family here, and I know also, why would I die for you when I know you have eternal life? <laughs> well, you know, Jesus did say this. There's no greater love than if a man lays down his life for a friend. Okay, would you lay your life down for me? If I had to, yes. Well, I mean... Okay, now you put me on the spot. I, I mean, I, look, I don't I know, John. I, hopefully I would. Battle with you, protecting you and fighting with you. Yeah, that's and what I mean. I, and then Esther, if I die, I die. Right? Yes. Because it's a win-win situation. Yeah. But to lay my life down and just say, like, if I had to push a button. That's not what it means. That, it doesn't mean that. It means that I will, if I have to sacrifice to keep you alive and you going in a you know situation. Let's say there's a gunman, right? Yeah. And I and I like I jump yeah. in front of you like uh yeah. yes. un- like uncle did to Peter. Peter yes. Parker. I would too for you. That's yes. the same that's what I'm talking about. God doesn't say I'm just going to kill myself so you can keep living. That's, that's not how it works. That would be <laughs> <Right>. a little silly. <laughs> right. Oh, I mean we'd be off on ourselves daily, you know. That's not no. But grounded yeah. in love says if somebody's attacking you or Torres or will a uh, Nick? If, I'm gonna stop them, and yeah. look. And if I get pinched because of that, you know, I think that something that uh, is a misconception that is obvious, but sometimes we need to like re re be reminded of, is there is no such thing of death. That's true. Because there's eternal life for both sides. You just go to another place. If you go to hell, you have eternal life in the gnashing of teeth. That's bad. And steam in heaven. So it, there is no death. I mean, yes, there is death, but there's death after, there's life after death. So I think we need to ask ourselves, you know, be reminded of that. Where do we want to go? John. Do we want to go eternal hell or do we want to go into the new paradise, which is called, well, as the Bible says, third heaven. Yeah. (laughs) There's a podcast topic, but heaven. (laughs) The third heaven. Yeah. Where do you want to go? That's the question, right? Oh, John, that's a good point. We got to change that because so many, the enemy lately has started saying and tricking people, right? Oh, once you're dead, you're just dead. You're just worm, you're worm food. And that's not true. Arnold said in an interview just a few months ago, it's the saddest thing I've ever heard. The Bible's false. Heaven's false. It's all a scam. When you die, you just die. So that, that means I don't get to, I don't get to have a, if he, unless he changes, I don't mm-hmm. get to have a, a, a pose off with him in heaven. No. Oh. A, what a horrible way to live. I agree. But also, you're also saying so many other things, though. Yeah. Brian. Can I can I just say that? You're also saying that every ghost encounter has been false. Every haunted house is not true. Every UFO sighting is false. Um, I mean, the amount of just the enemy side of things, uh, possessed people, uh, demon-possessed people, um, the dark side of the world that we see daily. All what Arnold is saying, Brian Knight, is all of that is false. Yeah. Oh, that's I, there's atheists that believe in ghosts. And that's you, which doesn't make any sense, but you're saying all of that is false. Because if you believe in the dark side, you believe in that haunted house, you believe in that ghost, you believe in that spirit, that demon, then you're admitting there's something after this realm of life we live in now. I mean, of course, we know what that is, but yep, eternal you, life somewhere. That then you have to come to terms with that, and you have to say, "Oh gosh, well, if I'm admitting that, maybe I do need to read the Bible. Maybe I I need to accept Jesus." Sound like Russell Brand? Oh, is that what his whole take is? Yeah, he's the same thing. He said the same thing. He went and found he fa- he went looking for everything that life could figure out, and he was like, "There's something else," because. Right, you know, I, there, fear. I'm scared, and what right. do I do? Right, exactly. So Arnold's saying that every haunted house out there is false. That's a giant statement. That's a stupid statement. I'll just say it. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I've seen ghosts. I, and whatever you want to call ghosts, right? Demonic figures, demons, the dark side, whatever. Right? I'm just saying ghosts generally. But uh, that's a pretty big statement, you know. Huge, 
And does he fully know? Nope. <laughs> um, Ephesians 3. Wow. So we have two more. Why don't you uh, slam dunk the last paragraph? Uh, 20. Because, yeah, this is a, yeah. look, this is like the biggest statement Paul has almost ever made. Watch this. Man, Paul, baby, let's go. Here we go. Verse 20. Hang on. To him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's the thing that we're praying for and asking for, God could do 10 times more than that. Yeah, way a far more abundantly than we could ask or think. He's pay, He's able to do everything and all. I love that. Yeah. You know, but, and that, but, that, but notice no. what it says, John. Yeah. Verse 20. Now now to him who is able to do far above abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power that works or that is at work in us. Right. Like we have a part. That's my that, be in the prison first. You got to be <laughs> to, to receive it all. You have to be in prison. That you do imprisoned in that love, baby. Come on. That's so true. Well, and look, we always forget to talk about the last part of Job. Everyone likes to talk about just Job, you know, being in tough times. I relate to Job. I relate to Job. I get it. I love it, of course. But let's not forget at the end of Job. Nobody talks about the ending of Job. Oh, Job, Job. And first of all, I'm very convinced that his family went to heaven, went to paradise and into heaven, and that they have eternal life, and he's up there now with them. So that's, that's a win-win. So it's not even really sad if you want to think about it. But then he goes through tough times. But the end of Job, he has a beautiful wife. Yeah. He has more kids than even before, blessed with children, and is given three times the land, riches, and comforts of this world at the end. Far more than Job ever had, as the Bible says here, um, asked for or could even think of. I mean, you have a good point. You have a good point. It says he got more kids, more stuff, another wife, houses, <laughs> lands. You think God doesn't care about that? Of course he cares about it. Right. Of course he cares about it. I love hey, that, John. Amen to that. Keep your eyes up. If you're going through tough time, keep your eyes up. You know, and uh, even if that didn't happen to Job at the end, still keep your eyes up. Yeah, exactly. But, um, still keep so your eyes up. You get sidetracked there. Eh? That's a great line. Yeah, I love that. No, no, you nailed it. That's like that's exactly what 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 should happen. Think about Job. No matter what you go through, there is victory in the end. You just got to hang on to the Lord, right? Yeah. If you don't, though, that's a scary life. You know, I I couldn't imagine life without Jesus anymore. Mm. Couldn't imagine that. Absolutely not. Well, chapter three. Here it is. There it is. Yeah, four is pretty long, and, and we do got to get going. I thought if four was pretty short, maybe we can hit it, but um, definitely four tomorrow, Brian. Yeah, let's do it. Definitely four maybe tomorrow. Even later tonight. We, we always say that. Sometimes we do. Most of the times we don't. But if there's a window tonight, there is something about a, a late night study that's very peaceful. There is. I, I do actually have to work at 8 p.m. for about an hour and a half. But I can do it before that, and I can yeah. do it after it. Okay. I know it's a late. Uh, I like those late. I remember we did those uh, super long ones with Donnie and you and I. We did like a weekend, you and I. Yeah. Like a whole Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but yeah. anyway, praise the Lord. I look at Tolbert. There are many ghosts on the battlefield. Yeah. Well, Arnold says you're wrong, Tolbert. See, that's the thing. I know I don't want people to focus on the enemy. I know that's weird to say sometimes. Don't focus on evil. But I do like to pull that that sword out sometimes on someone like an Arnold. I agree. It's, it's like, true. Wow, you're saying that Tolbert's karma, Arnold Schwarzenegger, to Nick Tolbert, who's a soldier of this country, been in war, has seen things, come back from war, struggles with many things that he witnessed, saw, and, and experienced. You're saying that Tolbert, seeing ghosts, seeing what he saw, the dark side of this world, he's wrong. That's what Arnold's saying, Brian Neitch. I know. Arnold is saying Nick is wrong because there's nothing, Brian. There's nothing. You just die. That's it. That's it. You just die. So all the dark side and the ghosts and the 
stupid. No one has seen nothing. All the video footage we have, too, you know, probably some of it's fake, but most of it, all fake. Look, I think you're right. You can't just discount people's literal life and literal testimony. They've seen too much. Right. And then let's talk about the testimony, Brian, you just mentioned. That's, My testimony of when I died. You've seen too much? How many people in this world have died and seen things? Arnold Schwarzenegger is saying, and I'm using him as an example of atheists, they're, Arnold's saying, no, John North, you didn't see nothing. <laughs> that was a dream. Oh, I didn't know you could dream when you're dead. Whatever, it was a dream. Nancy, Bob, Jamal, Sarah, uh, Evan, anything that you saw yeah. when, when you were dead for 10 minutes, false. I know. Tolbert, you're false. I know. And when you were a kid, you saw that ghost, false. False. Wrong. 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 That's what Arnold's saying. I know, John. It's ridiculous. Total ridiculous. You can't, you can't live your life like that. There's too many. Uh, look, unless you're sold out to the dark, unless you're sold out to lying, unless you are so deceiving yourselves. That's why we run to this book. We, we follow the Holy Ghost. We know that this Genesis 1-1, God created all things. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Look, John and I are not, look, we're just regular folks, right? We're the least of the saints. We're just the least of the saints. But for three and a half years, we have not only read the Bible, listened to the Lord, but man, we have seen some stuff. Mm. And you can't, you can't just take that away from people. Sorry, Arnold. You know, I know you're the champ, seven time champ, you know, whatever, but that don't mean nothing. You look, the Bible says this, and now we'll close. If you gain the whole world, but lose your soul, what does it matter? Isn't that the definition of Arnold right now? And we pray he gets saved. We pray he accepts oh. Christ and finds the truth. But that is literally, there's nobody that's gained the world more than Arnold. We love him. He's like gained he, the world, yeah. but he's going to lose it all. What's the point? I know. What are you here? Look at the timeline of life from Genesis 1-1 to now. I know. You're here for like this. Ready? I can't even snap my finger as quick as Arnold's here. Ready? That, I mean, I, I John, was too long. You're literally quoting the Bible. The book of James says it. We're like a vapor. It's a go. It's gone. Arnold's life. Ready? Gain the whole world. Ready? Here's Arnold's life. Here's my life. Ready? <laughs> Look, if you owned everything, even if you owned the planet, let's say you had enough money and power, everybody, you put everybody on a little island and you own the whole planet. It means nothing. It means nothing. I'm so I'm 80 years old. I'm so stressed about my retirement. Brother, go live homeless under a tree. Who cares? Brother, you, you maybe got 10 years left. Look, go walk, eat a loaf of bread, go to the beach and go swimming. I mean, what the heck, man? You're worried about your retirement. You'll be fine. Look, you got, you got eight years. If, if, if that person went into prison by a night and they said you got eight years, you're thinking to yourself, man, that's not, shoot, that's actually not that much time. Eight years, that's it? I know guys doing 25 to life. I know. Yeah. Yeah. They, you, you have cats in there 35, 40 years getting out when they're 75 years old. If I did something horrible and they said you got eight years, I'd be like, where do I sign? <laughs> hey, started, hey. Look, if you look, let's say you do go to jail. Maybe maybe you're listening and, and and you're sentenced or you're going to prison or something like that, right? Or you have some problems. Go start a ministry in jail. Get everybody saved. Get them all free. Preach the gospel. Share the love that you are rooted and grounded in to the world. Just cuz you're in jail doesn't mean you're in prison. Uh, yeah. Just cuz no. you're in prison doesn't mean you're 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 locked up. We could have been doing 25 to life, David. Look, Nick says, okay, I don't know. I can't say that. Okay, Arnold is saying no PEDs and plant-based diet. Yeah, he's gone. Something's wrong with him. Uh, he got, look, he took the vaccine. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's a whole different podcast. I know. Let's get out of here. We got to run. It's 1154. Um, got to get back to coaching. But thank you all for listening. What a what a great study. Brian Neitch, Facebook hello. Brian Neitch's friends. Yours too. Uh, and yes, and stay with us to continuing uh, the lap one of the Bible. And then we're excited to start over a new lap too. Yeah, we literally Ephesians four. Yes, com coming up later today or tomorrow. We'll see.
And don't forget too, just a little bit of a, a last thing. I promise we're out of here in ten seconds. Um, just a just a little bit of a uh, sword sharpener. Don't let anybody ever tell you that this book is flawed. Here's a line to say back to somebody that's hating on the Bible. You ready for this? I just want everyone to take this, keep it with them in case you need it, and it's out of love. Say this out of love. Are you ready? Genesis 1.1. If God created the heavens and the earth, first line of the Bible, God can write a book. Amen. And preserve it. God can write a book the way he wants. That's not difficult. Nope. And that's it. I'll pray it out. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for Brian Neitch, the quarterback of this study, the leader. He is Dave and I am Jonathan. Um, we are the least of the saints like Paul, but we give it our best and we love you so much. We dance for the Lord with all our might, which is you. And uh, we just thank you for Tobert and we thank you for everybody on the chat board here. Jen, uh, I was going to say Jen Ruth, but Jen Knight. She's listening. Sherry, Steph. Uh, let's see. Hi, Jen. Let's see. Who is at the top here? Yeah. Well, Torres is listening, but thank you for everybody. Oh, Will Hawkinson. Yeah. Gabe. Gabe uh, on the Facebook, yes. Thank you for Chapter 3. We're so excited for Chapter 4. We just love you so much. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for our families. And all that we have that is good is from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And thanks for honoring me, John. No, oh, you're the best. Yeah, so are you. God bless everybody. Thanks, Jen. Awesome. Brian, she loves you. Love you guys. Torres or uh, Nick Tobert, thank you. We'll be back. Salute. Salute.